Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. On today's show, we are going to work with the Serial Debug Console on the NVIDIA Jetson Nano Development Kit. This is an updated version of a previous video. We now include directions for the Jetson Nano B01. The Serial Debug Console on the Jetson Nano allows you to interface with another computer using a serial terminal program. The debug console is useful for communicating with the Jetson while it is booting up. You will need a TTL to USB serial converter cable to connect from the Jetson to the other computer. The cable takes the TTL level signals on the Jetson header pin and converts it into a USB format. We have one here. This is a magic TTL to USB converter cable. This one is made by Adafruit. The cable uses a USB to UART serial converter chipset. It's in here. We connect the USB side to our other computer and we connect the DuPont connectors to the Jetson. There are two different versions of the Jetson Nano development kit. The serial debug console location depends on which version you are using. We will go over how to connect to the newer version first. If you have the older version, skip ahead to the next section. The newer version of the Jetson Nano can be identified by the two CSI camera connectors on the carrier board. The serial debug console is accessible via J50, a 12-pin right-angle header on the carrier board. J50 is on the edge of the board opposite of the I.O. connectors. Located underneath the Jetson module, directly below the micro SD card reader. Turn the board over. There is a label for the connector pins on the underside of the board. The serial debug console is available on the pins labeled UART. We use a TTL to USB serial converter cable to connect to the Jetson. We are using one from Adafruit in the video. There's a link in the description below. We do what we call a crossover by connecting the transmit of the cable to the receive of the Jetson UART. The receive of the cable goes to the transmit of the Jetson UART. The ground of the cable goes to the ground pin. On the Jetson, transmit is labeled TXD, receive is labeled RXD. Make sure that the power is not connected to the Jetson. First, connect the ground of the cable to the ground pin of the connector. Next, connect the receive of the cable to the UART TXD. Finally, connect the transmit of the cable to the UART RXD. Get in there, you little pig dog. Do not connect the power from the cable. That's it. Just for reference, here's what it looks like with the Jetson module removed. Connect the USB cable to your host computer and you're good to go. Skip ahead past the next section. Let's take a look at the older version of the Jetson Nano next. The J44 header is located on the camera connector side of the board. Here's the camera connector. Here's the power block. And then here's the J44 header. It's located right next to the Jetson module. There's a pin layout silk screened on the other side of the board. Let's turn the board over. On the back of the board, this is the GPIO header side. And then here's J44, it's right next to the power block. From the edge of the board on down, we have CTS, which is clear to send. TXD, which is transmit. RXD, which is receive. This NC here is not connected. RTS is request to send. And then G and D is ground. G and D is okay by me. Let's flip the board over. Here's the J44 header, which is the serial console interface. We are wiring the cable as a null modem or what is commonly referred to as a crossover cable. In other words, the transmit of the Jetson goes to the receiver of the USB cable and the receive of the Jetson goes to the transmit of the USB cable. Crosses it over. So let's take the cable's white wire, which is the receiver, and connect it to the Jetson TXD. As you remember, that's two pins in from the edge. 
We then take the cable's green wire, which is transmit, and connect it to the Jetson's receiver. And then finally, we connect the ground wire, which is the black wire, to the Jetson ground. The red wire is not connected to anything. Let's switch over to the laptop screen. Okay, we're over on the PC. This one's running Ubuntu. We need a serial terminal application. Let's use Minicom in this case. This is dependent on the platform that you're using. If you're using a Windows machine, you might want to use Xterm or such. Let's open up a terminal. Let's install Minicom. Now let's configure Minicom so it can talk to the Jetson. We need sudo for this. Control A Z. O to configure Minicom. Serial port setup. We need to figure out the serial device. Let's do that. Okay, let's plug our serial console cable into the laptop. USB ports over here. And we can see that now the PL2303 converter is attached to TTY USB zero. Let's go back over to Minicom. We are going to say A. Let's change this to TTY USB zero. And let's take a look at our speed settings. We can see here that it guessed correctly. 115K bits, 8 bit, no stop, one parity. But if you need to change that, you go into E here and set it up. That looks like it's good. Let's save the setup as default. Configuration saved. And we'll exit. Let's quit out of Minicom. And we will restart it again so that the new settings take effect. And now let's plug the power into the Jetson Nano. And we should see a whole bunch of stuff come up here. If you hit a key while it's booting up here, you can stop it. it. Gives you a chance to kind of go back and see what it was up to. Let's ask for help. Oh my. This is all very low level stuff here. You can take a look at almost anything in the system at this point. Remember that the system is booting at this point. We haven't loaded the kernel. Let's keep booting. Type in boot. And if we stop it at this point, we can look at our EMMC boot options. These are stored in this particular file. In this case, we only have one kernel. If you have multiple kernels on your device, then you can pick and choose. We'll use that at some later point. So let's take one. It takes a little while for it to figure out here what's going on. There aren't any peripherals attached. There's no display, no ethernet or anything. Looks like it took a minute and a half. Okay, now we're at the login screen. Ubuntu is up and running. And here we are at the command line prompt. Take a directory. This is like you're in a actual terminal now on the machine. And you're in like Flynn, as they say. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.